Rohela governor focused on peace in province. Drugs believed to be exchanged for firearms. And UPNG signs agreement to improve HR function. This is National MTV News with Dennis Orere. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Saturday's news. Over 200 mediation teams are currently in Hela province to bring normalcy and peace to warring tribes. With the province not recording any tribal fights in the last four months, Hela Governor Philip Undialu says the focus for his administration now is to remove factory-made firearms from warlords. The mediation teams mostly made up of members from the PNGDF, the police and the provincial law and order committees are currently resolving 55 tribal fights that occurred last year. Many of these are isolated law and order issues that when left unattended by authorities tend to escalate into tribal classes. We got over 200 uh, mediation teams being deployed and we've been doing that for the last uh, three months. Uh, the mediation team that we have, and for the, for the first time, three months uh, or four months, uh, there's no more travel fights, no more killing. As the focus for the province now is to restore peace and normalcy, the governor says the province is also faced with a memo task of removing guns from warlords and criminals. The biggest challenge I have now is to uh, get rid of uh, guns, and gun is, was not part of our society. It remains a challenge and uh, it needs collective effort uh, and it, it's a member task uh, we have in hand. A member task which is becoming a strain on the economy of the province. We have been spending over the last uh, five, ten years, uh, 500,000 on our launch alone for the security forces. Uh, and accommodation and uh, vehicles put together on, on monthly basis. Uh, we could be spending, or we are spending almost 1, one million kina to 1.5 million kina in the name of uh, no, uh, law and order in the province. Meanwhile, Undialu also brushed aside rumors of him supplying warlords with guns and called on all educated elites of Hela province to work together in solving this issue. The presence of educated people on the ground, then I'm seeing people responding. So. If I can face myself into the battlefield and say, stop it, that's a respect they have for the leaders and the educated people. Uh, that's what I encourage everyone. Facebook will not solve problem for us. Facebook is owned by some Americans, and we are just making money for them anyway. If you care about uh, Hela, all of us need to come home and to fix that problem. Stanley Over Jr., National MTV News. Still in Hela province, a PNG Defence Force Forward Operations base currently in construction in Hela province is set to be opened by September this year. Hela Governor Philip Undialu says the base is a step in the right direction for the province to address mounting law and order issues. He also gave an update on other investments the province has made in improving the justice sector in Hela province. The 100-man camp is complete. We're just working on the uh, admin and uh, admin admin block and uh, and the uh, mess hall. Once that is done, for possibly July or September, mm -hmm. we'll have 100 men uh, defence force. So they will be permanently based in Hela to enforce law and uh, support police work. And that's on the defence. And by the time, uh, I will ask Exxon Mobil not to uh, uh, deploy any more securities in the project site. Uh, we can't uh, compromise national security. But 535 uh, police positions have been, uh, been approved already by uh, personal management. About uh, between 50 to 80 has been, has been advertised uh, uh, a month ago. So we'll be seeing an increased number of police coming to the province. So uh, we also got uh, one more added uh, magistrate on, in town. For the first time, we got court cases being had uh, in Koroba, in Como, and in Tari. Uh, this is the district courts uh, uh, been had. Uh, we've just completed uh, the the judicial compound. Very soon, uh, when PNG Power connects power into the judicial compound, uh, we'll have uh, a judge, um, a resident judge. 
a large number of settlers in fear of getting caught in between a tribal conflict fled to Mari Barracks last night seeking refuge. They are residents of the Gorobe settlement in Koki in the Mosby South electorate of Port Mosby. According to police, settlers from the Gorobe Talai settlement left their homes around 10 p.m. last night after rumors of a possible attack. They climbed over the Brigadier Hill and spent the night at Mari Barracks. NCD Police Zone 1 Commander Chief Inspector Fred Tundu said police have increased presence on the ground since last night and continue to do so today. Tundu has called on the communities to let police take over the situation and conduct investigations. Meanwhile, NCD Governor Pois Pakop yesterday warned settlers in NCD to abide by city rules and help NCDC carry out its settlement to suburbs plan. He said if settlers continue to incite violence and create threat and disharmony for other peaceful citizens, he will not hesitate to evict them. Police in Eastern Highlands have confiscated large quantities of marijuana that are being transported from the Highlands region down to the coastal provinces. Deputy Commander of the Northern Command, Chief Superintendent John Kale, says the drugs were seized during roadblocks at Yonki. Police believe most drugs were intended to be traded for weapons. Police in Yonki have been carrying out roadblocks since the fighting started between the two tribal clans in February. The roadblocks were to ensure that firearms, ammunition and other offensive weapons are not brought into the province. So consequently, we also come across a lot of uh, drugs um, uh, that have been uh, transported from islands uh, along the highway down towards the coastal areas. And those drugs have been confiscated and uh, those who have been in possession of the drugs are dealt with by police. Last Monday, members of the mobile squad in Eastern Highlands confiscated 8 kilograms of marijuana during a vehicle search on a PND bus traveling to Lay. The drugs were found neatly wrapped inside the black plastic and taped on the outside with white tape. The suspect from Turubu in the Sipik province was arrested and charged for being in possession of dangerous drug. Like the police are doing a good job there, while stopping the fight, they're also protecting and ensuring that other crimes are not uh, carried out. Kale warned police will make sure those found in possession of drugs or weapons will be dealt with accordingly. Particularly uh, during this fight, uh, we believe that the drugs that are smuggled out of uh, Kainantu or Eastern Islands are purposely to exchange for firearms. So I also want to uh, warn people here that uh, if you are caught, you will be dealt with according to the laws that we have. And also I want to appeal to whoever is uh, uh, smuggling drugs to exchange for firearms must stop because the firearms that you bring into the into your local area will turn around and kill yourself and kill your families and other people around the community that you live in. So that uh, practice must cease. Martha Lewis, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. More stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Medang COVID-19 incident manager says the province has received its share of 500 AstraZeneca vaccines and priority will be given to healthcare workers. Dr. Martin Diamond says, however, it is optional for frontliners to decide whether to take the jab or not. However, with the help of UNICEF, the province will carry out training in pre preparation for the nationwide rollout. Uh, Medin COVID-19 incident manager Dr. Martin Diamond says there is an increase in the number of COVID-19 positive cases. Diamond says the virus is slowly creeping into the districts where Usinobundi has already detected a number of positive cases. From Medin, I am going to go out to the district now. Uh, Usinobundi, Usap area, all start law, detecting local. I believe Sumkar. The limited resources and manpower at the provincial hospital would become a big challenge for healthcare workers as the number of positive cases surge. 
Dr. Diamond says as of last Tuesday, there were 11 cases being admitted. Yet, though the vaccines are optional, it is important for healthcare workers to be protected in order to protect their patients and families as well. The scary thing about that is, with very limited resources we have, if we have more severe cases, we will go over it. So the only way to prevent death, there is no other way, but it is vaccine. It's the only way to prevent severe PHA CEO Fidelis Waima urged health workers to maintain COVID-19 protocol at all times, while encouraging frontline workers to take care of their health and eating a balanced meal. Make sure you look after your, yourself, and so you must be protected from, from getting the virus, from being infected, and then you start to get serving the person that needed your help. The CEO also supports Dr. Diamond that the vaccines are optional and it is open for healthcare workers to take the jab or not. UNICEF immunization consultant Dr. Anol Saloy is in Medeng to help Medeng plan its vaccine rollout in the province. Meanwhile, the Medeng Provincial Hospital uplifted all its services to full operation as of last Tuesday. Martha Louise, National MTV News. The 2022 national general elections will proceed as scheduled. The Prime Minister announced today that because of COVID-19, they will be looking into the biometric system for voting in the coming national general elections. The national general elections in Papua New Guinea is a time of massive gatherings and feasts. The coming 2022 elections, however, will be different with the government already in talks with the Electoral Commission on how best they will run the election amidst a pandemic. The government is opting to use the biometric voter system in the 2022 national general elections. This is part of the COVID-19 measures they will be looking at going into the elections, but also to address issues of block votes and issues associated with one-day polling. Something new at my instruction that we might introduce to clean up the voting process uh, is uh, we're trying to have biometric and electoral roll that is uh, registered electronically with photo photograph attached to all our voting population. So this conversation will mature in the next month or two. For 2022 elections, we want to clean up in the face of COVID-19 also and for COVID-safe uh, voting practice next year and campaign practice next year. We want to tidy the common road aspect where one person, one vote uh, can be secured through a better common road that is linked to an ID system based. With 14 months to go before the national elections, the government is now calling on provincial governments and COVID-19 provincial control centres to come up with their response plans. For COVID-19, a key committee that we've established since last year was the provincial control centres, of which uh, the provincial administrators coordinate and uh, provincial health authority, CEO, and the provincial police commander uh, important three personals running the province's response team. And so today's meeting re-emphasized this again, that every province, if not established yet by today, and it is really incumbent, incumbent upon every provincial governors and provincial governments to take ownership of COVID response as well as key national government programs like election preparations that we want to embark upon. Shamin Poreyambeb, National MTV News. The Chamber of Mines and Petroleum has announced Richard Kasman as its new president. Mr. Kasman, who served as vice president for three years, takes over from Geria Aupi, who had his first engagement with the industry since 1991. Following his announcement as chamber president, Mr. Kasman highlighted and thanked outgoing President Geria Aupi for the immense work and advice he provided for the industry and Papua New Guinea. In his final address to the members of the chamber at a recent AGM, Mr. Aupi provided context to the industry's efforts to continue operating during the pandemic. 
He said constant dialogue and discussion amongst council members representing mining and petroleum have been at the core of the chamber's engagement in the national and political space. The Chamber of Mines and Petroleum is the peak body representing the mining and petroleum sector in Papua New Guinea, with a membership variety spanning across both the resource and business sectors. The University of Papua New Guinea this week signed a payroll service agreement to develop a new salary and wages system for the university. The agreement is expected to assist the university to raise and monitor level staff of performance and deliver high academic standards. The agreement was signed between the university and Concept Group Limited. The absence of a human resource-driven payroll system has resulted in the university's HR function being undervalued and under-resourced over the years. The UPNG Interim Council, led by Chancellor Dr. Robert Igara, was tasked to review and reform the university's governance structures, with the HR function being one of them. The critical areas for having sound management, the governance of the HR side were missing. And uh, being able to get uh, data on time, you know, relating to HR functions, you know, was extremely uh, difficult. And so, <clears throat> Uh, we found it necessary to start addressing the question of how do we uh, develop a sound uh, system, what's the platform. Our object is to make the University of Papua New Guinea the best university benchmarking internationally. And to achieve that, we must have the best people. And to have the best people, you have to make sure you take good care of them. The Ascender payroll system is the most advanced HR-driven system used in the country under license to Concept Group Limited. The features include pay slips will be automatically be emailed directly to employees, entitlements and superannuation are calculated and tracked, and a wide range of modern online web-based self-services. It was actually specifically designed by Queensland University of Technology, or QIT it was back then, uh, to, to meet the specific requirements of the of the, uh, the higher education, particularly with things like monitoring and managing uh, tutors who are also lecturers, who are also tutors elsewhere, or might also be on study leave. There's you know universities have a very complex um, way of managing their staff and and providing a service to their students. The implementation phase will commence next week and the rollout is expected to be completed by the end of June. Yana Zoriri, National MTV News. Philip Aravure Primary School in Gero National Capital District launched its five-year development plan yesterday. Apart from launching the plan, the school also presented a project proposal to a representative of Deputy Prime Minister Sam Basil. Philip Aravura Primary School is a level 7 school in NCD that is first developing under the administration of Robert Silas, who launched the school's five year development plan yesterday. Mr. Silas says collaboration between teachers and parents is needed to make the plan become successful. This five year development plan will never happen without your help. It will only eventuate when you put in your help. One of the problems the school is facing right now is land spacing for further infrastructure developments like classrooms, a library and staff houses. That is why teachers cannot be housed in the school. Spacing is a very big problem here. We don't have enough space here. But our population is very big. Another huge challenge now the school is facing is water issues. However, Mr. Salah says they will take on the issue next year. So water is a very big problem. So here, to Come to attack that problem and make a certain first project room the next year, 2022, water. The school also presented a proposal to a representative of Deputy Prime Minister, which highlighted the need for 10 new classrooms. Alexis Sengi, National MTV News. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. 
Oil Search PNG Orchids captain Elsie Albert believes that the growing professionalism in the NRL Women's Premiership will open the door for more local talent from PNG, provided that players remain dedicated to the sport, taking full advantage of the opportunities provided to prove themselves. Now from Damia, Shelly Jones, sorry, The evolution of Women's Rugby League in Australia into a professional sporting competition has been experienced firsthand by Oil Search PNG Orchids captain Elsie Albert, who is currently contracted to the St. George Illawarra Dragons in the NRL Women's Premiership. Albert was able to earn her NRL contract solely on her performances on the international stage for the PNG Orchids. At this stage. Oh, 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 oh. So, like, uh, I'm currently with the NRL Dragons, and I think I will be for this year as well. But, you know, due to COVID-19 and everything that is going on, I'm, I'm, I'm here. So hopefully, hopefully when, when this uh, COVID-19 bubble uh, eases, then I should be going down soon. What they do is they send me programs, what they want me to work on. And I'm not seeing that with the PNG RFL at the moment. Like, I don't see them sending uh, programs out to, you know, girls that are playing outside. I hopefully, I know they have that in the cards, and hopefully they work on that, improving that, and then eventually, you know, girls outside of Port Mosby and in, in Port Mosby as well should improve. Put PNG further in front. Can she do it? She hooks it around. Look, it's beautiful. Serving as an example to local players of what can be achieved if they are willing to dedicate themselves to the game while taking the opportunity to perform on the international arena. Things are coming up for the women's competition. Now, like, like I said earlier, like uh, the NRL is looking at uh, making the NRLW, the women's comp, a professional competition. Um, it's good for our girls here back, back here as well. Like, um, if you... Like trying to give up and stuff, don't, because things are looking up and things are going to get better with time. Willing to give an inch at this stage. Axti Lovai, Chukai Sports. Papua New Guinea's National Rugby League competition, the Digicel Cup, is set for kickoff on Saturday, May 8, 2021, after approval was granted by the Pandemic Controller's Office yesterday. PNG RFL CEO Stanley Hondina said this in a statement following an audience with the pandemic controller David Manning. The controller issued the approval with two recommendations for all teams to be based in one city or centre and play all its games at a location preferably chosen by their office that have less cases compared to others or secondly, run the competition in two cities or centres concurrently with no spectators until the COVID-19 situation improves. PNG NRLC opted for the second option in response. Hondina said the competition will kick off under the strict Bunnies protocols. That story wraps up Trukai Sports, the weather report for the next 24 hours after these messages. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Weather forecast for tonight in the southern region Port Moresby, Daru, and Alotau mostly fine. Kerama partly cloudy. Popondeta cloudy periods. To the Momasa region, Lei partly cloudy, Medang and Wiwek cloudy periods with showers, Vanimo cloudy with a few showers. To the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau cloudy with few showers, Kaveng brief showers, Kokopo and Rabao partly cloudy with brief showers, Kimbe and Buka cloudy periods with few showers. To the Highlands region, Mount Hagen brief overnight showers then morning fog, Goroka and Kundiawa, cloudy periods, then morning fog. Mendi and Wabeg, brief overnight showers, then morning fog.
Strong wind warning, renewal strong winds warning for all coastal waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru, through Gulf of Papua to Hood Point to Samurai Island and Milne Bay Islands. Fresh to strong southeast winds of 23 to 34 knots are expected to persist over the next 24 hours, casing rough seas. Warning advice, all small crafts and boats are advised to take necessary precautions before going out to sea, especially in the warning areas. Forecasts for small crafts for the next 24 hours, waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru to Kiwai Islands, to Kerama to Yul Island to Hood Point to Samurai Islands, with waters of Samurai Islands to Cape Wogo and eastern and western Milne Bay Islands, seas 2 to 2.5 meters. Waters north of Cape Vogo to Huon Gulf to Finchafen, with waters of Manus and its western group of islands, and with waters of New Island to New Britain and with waters of Bougainville, seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters of Finchafen through VTS Dampier Straits to CRC Long Islands, seas 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Waters north of Long Island to Medang to Wiwek to Aitape to Vanimo and northern PNG Indonesian border, seas 0.5 to 1 meter. Ocean forecasts for PNG areas in the coral seas, seas moderate to patches rough with east to southeast winds of 25 to 34 knots. In the Solomon seas, seas light to moderate with south to southeast winds of 10 to 20 knots, tending clockwise over Milne Bay Islands. In the Bismarck seas, seas light with southwest to southwest winds of 5 to 10 knots. And in the Pacific Ocean, seas moderate to rather rough with northwest winds of 15 to 25 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. And that's been the news, sports and weather for today, Saturday, the 1st of May 2021. On behalf of the entire MTV news team right around the country, have a safe weekend, pleasant viewing, good night. <laughs>